And we're back. So I took a break there because I figured you didn't really want to watch me play solitaire. It doesn't make for very compelling streaming. Uh, so, and we're back. So I took a break. Having uh, solved a few puzzles, we see now that we have access to a new part, the MC6000. Uh, this is basically the same as the first CPU or part, uh, except it has a, a few more ports, and most importantly for us, probably, uh, it has another register in addition to the accumulator. It has a, uh, a data register. Super important. So, we have a new puzzle. Uh, we need a pulse generator with certain requirements. However, instead of buying one at the market price, I thought we could simply create our own. And here we're going to get to see how the game does conditional execution. So, let's rename this. Because I always like renaming things. Alright, we have a button. Button, button, who's got the button? Uh, and we have an output. An input and an output. When the button is pushed, generate pulses as indicated until the button is released. So here's our input, and then this is the output we want for that input. Here you can see our new part. We're not actually going to use this for this. Uh, I don't think we'll need to use it. Oh, the other major effect of using this alternate part is now you have a whopping 14 lines in which to put your faux assembly language code, rather than the cramped 9. We also have a bridge. Uh, what the bridge is for is if you're, you've got a lot of wires on your board and you know you need to cross over one, you can do that ah. without uh, having the wires touch like that. But we don't need the bridge right now. Let's get rid of all our wires. And uh, you know what? We'll prototype this with the larger board. And then once we've done that, if we're under nine lines, we will replace it with the smaller board. Why would you want to use the smaller board? Because the larger board has a higher production cost here. If we see this as five yen or yuan, excuse me. And this is a total of eight yuan, so that would be this is three and this is five. We'll use the five one for right now. So let's wire up the button and we will wire up our pulse. And we can just go ahead and run this with no code just to watch it fail, right? as expected. I always like to do that just to... I don't know why I like to do that, but I do. Alright, so what have we got? Well, we have an input. We don't need that input. The value of the input doesn't matter to us. All we want to know is, is the input on? So let me check our language reference. And we have a bunch of testing uh, opcodes. There's test equals, which is, are we equal to a certain value? There's test greater than, test less than, and a comparison. So for this, really all we want to know is, are we greater than zero, right? That seems like a simple way to think of this, so let's try it out. Maybe it'll work, maybe it won't work. So we're going to say if p0 is greater than 0. Okay, so what do we do? So if you played TIS 100, you know how this actually worked, is you ended up branching, right? You would write something like branch if equal to label, and then somewhere else you would write label blah blah blah. Um, this ended up, this was really frustrating to me and, and I think this is why he's doing this this way because you could you can kind of absorb a lot of your limited line budget just with labels even though you could put things on the same line. That was kind of a pain. So with Shenzhen IO the way this seems to work is you can prefix a line with a plus or with a minus. And the various test opcodes 
will run or not run, or I should say enable or disable code based on their result. So in this case, if um, p0 is greater than zero, then we will run, we will enable lines that begin with plus. So what do we want to do if, uh, if p0 is greater than zero? Well, we probably just want to, let's see, it looks like the pulse begins at the same moment that the button is pressed, so we just want to start. So let's just say, so the clever way to do this would be to use not, which would invert the uh, accumulator. So let's try that, rather than just saying move 100. We'll say move accumulator to P1, and we're going to sleep. Um, and we could then go on and you know do that again, but but let's let's just let's just let that go. I'm not sure that's going to work. In fact, I'm I'm pretty sure it won't work at all. But I'm curious to try it anyway. And of course, uh, these we want. Oh, you know what? Let's put a disabled line here because if we're disabled, then we definitely know we want the accumulator to be zero, right? And just in case these repeated knots leave us in a bad state, um, let's clear that out. So I'm not positive this is gonna work, but I wanna give it a go. Let, let's step through a line at a time and see what happens. And that way, if I've screwed up, we'll all enjoy the uh, ability to laugh at me. So is P zero greater than zero? I hope not. It is not, so we're moving zero into the accumulator. You could see our disable, our minus line is run only if this test fails. Okay, and already, so here's our bug. We're not sleeping, and we're not sleeping because I said that the sleep line should only be run conditionally. So let's try it again. There we go. First cycle, totally correct. Second cycle, totally correct. All right, third cycle. So our button has been pushed. We can see, actually, if you look here on the wire, the value coming from the button uh, of 100 has been set. So you'll note that th these are analog values. Those of us who work in software kind of get used to thinking of these things as being either on, and on or off. But when you work with electronics, you realize that it's a lot messier under the hood. All right, so we've gone and done our conditionally executed code. We're saying not, move it out to the output, and that's right. And it looks like we're pulsing okay, so let's just go ahead. Ah, all right, there's a bug. So this looked fine to me, but obviously something went wrong here. Excuse me. Uh, something went wrong here. So I see this control click to toggle breakpoint. I've never actually tried that. I don't see anything happening when I control click. Maybe it's command click. Ah, it is command click. All right. Let's set a breakpoint one cycle before. I don't know if you could see this on the stream. It's a very subtle indicator. Uh, I kind of wish it was a bit more obvious. So we'll simulate right up to our breakpoint. All right, so there we are. We're going to, let's uh, step through. Okay, there we go, 100. All right, so where are we now? We are, the button has just been released and we are still sending 100 out to the accumulator. I think the button's been released. We're going to step. We're moving zero to the accumulator. Oh, okay, so there you go. Right there, it's almost exactly the analog of, of the bug we had before, where I, I had the sleep executing conditionally. Uh, since we've gone to some effort here to make sure the accumulator is in the right state, uh, it's a little bit sloppy actually just doing not. This should be executed unconditionally. So let's try that again using my best Dan Carlin voice. Let's try that again. 
and it looks like it's working. So you'll note that each of these different runs is slightly different. Um, so you know, think of it as unit testing for your little toy fake electronics. Great, and we've uh, we've solved the uh, solved the world, and already, as you can see, uh, it's already begun. Apostatic has managed to do this in half the power budget that, than we did. Um, this is going to be the beginning of a long series of me falling down the leaderboard. Um, TIS 100 really uh, made me very humble about my ability to solve these puzzles in any, uh, any th thoroughly efficient way. All right, and you can see now we've got two more puzzles. Um, now this actually is kind of cool because you get to see something that's not quite as um, abstract. So we've got an animated eSports sign. So what does that mean? So we have click, click 0 and click 1 are simple outputs connected to display segments corresponding to a clicking animation. Drink 0, 1, and 2 are connected to uh, display segments corresponding to a drinking animation. Control the display segments with fixed repeating signals as indicated. And here's our signal. So this is kind of a new thing for these games. Um, TIS 100 was very, very abstract, right? You have your inputs, you have your outputs, and, you know, essentially the question of did I succeed at the puzzle is solved by were the numbers right? Likewise, constructor your success or failure, you determined it entirely from this verification panel or the analog and constructor. Here we actually have this picture here, and it's not just decorative. Uh, it actually shows you what's going on. So let's grab a component. Um, there's no input here because it's a fixed signal. So we're going to wire P0 to click 0 and P1 to click 1. You know what? I don't like that. Let's... Let's be fancy. There we go. That looks much more, uh, much more fun. And now we need to write some code. So this is a pattern that Zachtronics uses in a lot of their games, where they'll give you a puzzle which has an easy part and a hard part. And the easy part is really meant to kind of give you, uh, give you a taste of the sorts of techniques you might use. To solve the hard part. So we know, we see here that click 0 is going to start high and click 1 is going to start low and they're going to alternate every second in a very basic pattern. So let's just uh, let's just go ahead and do that. So let's, we're starting, you, you're guaranteed to start with the accumulator with 0. So I'm just going to go ahead and uh, move the accumulator to P1 and then flip it and then move it to P0, and then sleep. And if I've done my job right, then that will solve this puzzle, or well, solve uh, this part of the puzzle, the click zero and click one. And I want you to watch over here while I simulate. There you go. And you can see we're actually animating um, that sign. All right, so that, that was the easy part. I used some power probably five times as much as Apostatic did. Uh, let's go ahead and grab the larger larger component here. Oh, now this is interesting. So there are three outputs here, and our components only have two outputs. So obviously we've got to do something clever. Um, I could think of two vague techniques for solving this. Um, we can chain these together somehow, or we could have completely separate um, components. And I'm not sure which is better. These certainly are fixed. So when I took a run to this earlier, um, I actually daisy chained two of these components together Actually, I think I used a smaller one, and then had them communicate with each other using the XBus. And largely, that's because I wanted to know how the XBus worked. Um, 
but I don't think we actually need to do that at all since we know the signals are fixed. I think we could just have one of these things drive one of them and have a second one drive another. It seems to me like it is using too much uh, materials, but what the heck. Well, let's just take it as a first, a first cut. We could always come back and make it more efficient later. And if you've played any Zactronic games, you know you will. So you can see it's wait for six cycles. No, it's on for six cycles. One, two, three, four, off for four. Two, three, four, five, six. On six, off four. And so in this case, we'll just do, you know. And yeah, I'm using uh, just magic numbers here because I don't really care. Sleep for six. Zero. Sleep for four. And that should be one of our pictures. Here we go. That looks correct. So let's try and do our second drinks. Uh, we've got a drink one and drink two. And these are... So the way I had done this in my previous was I actually compared and waited for this to go down before bringing these up, but it looks to me like we can just do them. All right, so sleep six. Spelled something wrong. Move the accumulator to P0. Not. Uh. All right, so now we have a problem because we are out of lines of code. And those of you who played TIS 100, this is a super, uh, a super common occurrence. Um, we're out of lines of code. I've actually made drink one work, I think. Let's test it. No, I'm totally wrong. <laughs> Well, let's say I made drink one work, and we'll come back to it. Um, but we're out of space to be able to uh, make drink zero, drink two work. So let's pull in a bigger one, and I'm going to take a break at this point. But I will come back later and show you what we found.